Earlier this year, down on that Devon beach, walkers found one of the ocean's most notorious creatures, the Portuguese man of war. And this isn't an isolated event. Man of war have washed up on the shores of multiple UK beaches this year, which begs the question, where are they coming from? Is this now a frequent occurrence in the UK? And could they be a danger to beachgoers and swimmers alike? Discovering these answers has led me into the intriguing world of this incredible and dangerous creature with some fascinating results. But to show you them, I need to get off this headland. You might have already heard of the Portuguese Man of War. It's blue, it's got big long tentacles and a really, really horrible stink. But it's not something you typically find in British waters, that is, not until recently. There's been a huge increase in Man of War sightings in the UK over the last 12 months. Which is kind of weird because UK waters aren't usually their natural habitat. I've been doing some research into what the heck is going on here and I've discovered there's some misleading reports out there about why these creatures are making their way here. And I'm going to show you some data evidence proof about why these creatures are really coming here in this video. But first, what's more important right now is to understand what the Portuguese Man of War actually is because they're kind of weird. The man of war kind of looks like a jellyfish. A lot of people think it is a jellyfish, but it's not. It's actually a lot more interesting than that. Man of war are a class of creature called xiphonophores, and xiphonophores are amazing. There are loads and loads of different types of xiphonophores, not just the man of war. But what sets xiphonophores apart is that they aren't technically a single creature. They're actually a colony of tiny little creatures called zooids. Now this is kind of mind bending, but stick with me because it's fascinating. Each zooid in this colony is genetically identical, but each performs a different task. And the collection of all these individual little zooids performing all their different tasks creates the overall organism of a xiphonophore. You can think of it loosely like a hive. You have the worker bees, soldier bees, and the queen bee, all with their specific tasks, but collectively they create a single hive. It's kind of the same with siphonophore. The zooids don't move around like bees, they're stuck in place, but each is an individual creature with its own task. And collectively, they create a siphonophore. And one of those siphonophores is the man of war. As a result of this unique morphology, these colonies are able to grow to extraordinary lengths, with some man of war having tentacles that stretch up to 30 meters long, which creates a lot of stinging potential. But they also don't have a brain or a single nervous system. Each zooid has a nervous system, but the siphonophore as a whole doesn't have a single nervous system in the way that we do. They have something called a nerve net. But we don't need to get into too many details about that. The key point I'm trying to make here is that although they're incredible, these creatures are actually quite simple. And that's important to know for when we look at the reason why so many are turning up here shortly. And it's also important because those super long tentacles are extremely dangerous, delivering a horrendous sting packed with venom, which they use to paralyze and catch a fish that they then reel up and digest using powerful chemicals. And the way they inject that venom is pretty cool, unless you're the one being injected. Because remember how I said that the man of war is a colony of little creatures called zooids, all with their own function? Well, you could probably call these ones the hunting zooids, because they contain little spherical capsules, which when triggered, fire out a dart that injects venom into the prey. That's its specific task within the colony, and it does a pretty good job, because it's that excruciating sting where man of war gets its fearsome reputation. And these little zooids aren't prejudiced. They will happily sting you just as quick as a passing fish. And unfortunately, that venom is also exceptionally painful to humans. A sting from a man of war will almost guarantee you'll suffer from red welts and blisters at the very least. And on rare occasions, their sting has been fatal. However, and this is the first myth we can bust about the man of war. All the reported deaths I've found have been as a result of allergic reactions to the sting, which can interfere with lung and heart activity if you're unlucky enough to be allergic to them. And if you did ever get stung by one or by anything else in the sea for that matter, and the tentacle is still stuck to your skin, make sure you pull it off slowly with a stick or something similar. If you're trying to rub it off, it'll likely fire out more venom filled darts. Likewise, pouring fresh water onto the sting or using the old wives tale of peeing on the sting will change the salinity. And if there's any of those hunting zooids still left in the skin, they'll react to that change of salinity and fire off more venom filled darts. The best thing to do is to just wash the skin with salty seawater or vinegar if you can. And then once you get a chance, shave the affected area nice and closely, which will remove a very thin layer of skin, 
along with, hopefully, some of the remnants of those stinging darts. Now we all know what man of war are, and just before I dive into the results of my research on what's bringing them to British waters, I want to discuss that deadly reputation they have. Because whether we like it or not, they are here and they'll continue to come here in the future. So we need to know whether we should be worried about swimming in waters where man of war have been spotted. We can help to answer this question by looking at human interactions with man of war across the rest of the world. Because whilst we rarely see them here in the UK, they're actually very numerous in areas of their normal habitat, with thousands of man of war stings reported every year. And whilst those stings are very painful, they don't really justify the deadly tagline that's been given to them. Because when I tried to research into the number of man of war sting related deaths worldwide, I found that any recorded deaths tend to be years apart and are generally a result of unfortunate allergic reactions. To put that into some perspective, around 10 people in the UK are killed by bee stings each year, and that number is around the same for allergic reactions to peanuts. But we don't tend to label bee stings and peanuts as inherently deadly. But of course, that sting is still gonna hurt a lot. And whichever way you look at it, this isn't something you want to get stung by. So let's start understanding why these weird creatures are all of a sudden coming here. If you do any research on this topic, you'll find news articles suggesting that increasing temperatures of UK waters are leading to higher numbers of man of war, which should lead to a pretty simple correlation. Higher water temperatures equals more man of war. And on the face of it, that would make sense because man of war are typically found in the warm waters of tropical and subtropical zones. So I plotted the average sea temperature off the coast of Plymouth per quarter for the last three years. And since Plymouth is on the south coast of the UK, it has some of the country's warmest sea temperatures. I then overlaid that with the number of news articles reporting man of war sightings. And the results were actually quite surprising. For a start, these two periods of the warmest sea temperatures have hardly any man of war sightings. And on top of that, the second highest period of man of war sightings is found at the coldest time of the year in quarter one, 2022. There has been some correlation in 2023 with the warm period of quarter three and four also experiencing lots of man of war sightings. But given the complete lack of association between temperature and sightings in previous years, it doesn't really appear like sea temperatures are the primary cause. There is another possibility. And it's the reason I started this video talking about the unique but simple morphology of the siphonophore. Because I think the main reason is to do with the biology of these creatures. Man of war float at the ocean's surface using that distinctive blue and purple bladder, which is filled with gas, making them buoyant. This pretty amazing bladder is formed in the shape of a sail, which catches the wind, helping to propel the siphonophore along. But they don't have any eyes or a brain or even a singular nervous system. So how do they control where they go? Well, the answer is unbelievably simple. Around 50% of man of war will develop a sail pointing right, and the other 50% will point left. And that's it. They can't move the sail, they can't choose their direction, they're completely at the mercy of the prevailing wind. And the evolutionary idea behind this is a reduction in risk. If the 50% of left pointing sails go in this direction and head into danger, then at least the 50% of right pointing sails will head this way to safety. It's a way to ensure that they can never be totally wiped out by some huge disaster. But it would take a lot of wind to blow a man of war from their normal habitat to our waters, thousands of miles away. Which is why in normal conditions, sightings of man of war in the UK are very, very rare. But this does give us our first clue. Maybe it's nothing to do with the climate and sea temperatures. Maybe it's actually something to do with the weather. A strong enough storm might be able to sweep these siphonophore from their tropical and subtropical waters with fast enough pace and enough power to carry them all the way here to UK waters. After all, Man of War has no say in where it actually ends up. And if we look at the number of named storms which have hit the UK since 2010, we do see this upward trend. But a general upward trend is nowhere near evidence enough. So instead of plotting sea temperatures, I plotted all the named storms which had hit the UK per quarter for the same time period. And straight away, we see something interesting. Can you see it? I'll point it out. There was this huge period of no major storm activity during 2022. 
and that's very unusual. Typically, the UK will get seven to eight major storms per year with nice names like Franklin, Dudley and Eugene. But for most of 2022, these storms just didn't happen, which is why the next bit is so interesting. When we overlay that chart with the number of news articles about man of war sightings, we now start to see a pretty close correlation. With loads of man of war sightings following the storm activity seen in 2021, then almost radio silence for a year, until this recent flurry of storm activity has swept a whole new raft of stinging siphonophores to our beautiful British coast. So does that mean water temperatures really have no impact? Well, that quiet period of 2022 actually recorded some record high sea temperatures around the UK, but there was still hardly any man of war sightings in this period. So whilst increasing global sea temperatures might be a reason for why we're experiencing more storms in the UK, there seems to be no direct link between sea temperatures and the number of man of war sightings. Sightings increase when there's a storm, and it doesn't matter if the water Water temperature is 5 degrees or 15 degrees, which means we're still going to get man of war coming here in the future. So you need to know what the odds of coming in contact with a man of war and potentially being stung actually are. Well, the Marine Conservation Society recorded just 62 UK sightings of man of war in 2021. In reality, that's quite a small figure. For some comparison, around 30 to 60 people per year are struck by lightning in the UK. And I think those odds reduce even further now we know that storm activity is what brings them here. Because there needs to be storm activity. High water temperatures won't bring them here. And whilst the number of major storms have been trending upwards in the UK over the last decade, people tend not to go swimming during storms, except maybe surfers. And most people don't swim in the winter either, which tends to be the stormiest period. And on top of that, man of war aren't exactly a sneaky species. That bladder is pretty bulbous and it floats on top of the water. So on the very slim chance you did get close to one, you'd probably spot it and then have a chance to swim away before it can actually cause you any harm. So the good news is the odds of you actually coming in contact with a man of war in UK waters are still very, very low even with those increasing numbers. And even though they are kind of weird and rather dangerous, there are still lots of creatures in the sea which I'd be much more worried about swimming near. And you can learn more about those as well as a whole host of other bizarre sea creatures in my video here where I discover some of the strangest inhabitants of our oceans. 